A parent asked this question. Our families had a very difficult year, including the loss of a grandparent and a move from our hometown. I've been stressed. My kids have been fighting and uncooperative. I'd love to have a fresh start, but I've never had much luck with New Year's resolutions. Any advice? We're going to talk about that in this video. Parenting, boy, there's a lot to it, a lot we intuitively understand and pay attention to, and many times we don't know what to do or where to go. So this channel provides you with lots of opportunities to explore parenting from a lot of different angles on a lot of different topics. I'm Susan Stiffelman. I'm the author of Parenting Without Power Struggles and Parenting with Presence. And the work that I do has been tested in the field for over 40 years. I'm a marriage and family therapist. I was a teacher. And I've had an online community of parents who have taken advantage of my membership programs and my master classes for many, many years. So I've been everywhere in the world and learned so many things from parents like you who just want to kind of create the best possible environment for you and your kids to have fun, to connect, and to launch them into an adulthood where they're strong, sturdy, resilient, kind, and all those good things. So let's look at this question that a parent had posed about wanting to start the new year in a better frame of mind. Um, if you were to embark on a, a sailing trip and your destination was a thousand miles away, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. If you got off course a little bit, you're gonna recover. But if you don't course correct over time and eventually you start sailing Southeast, right? Your destination is South, then you're gonna end up somewhere entirely different from where you intended to go. Much of the work of parenting I see as course correction it sort of falls into the same model where maybe we nag a little too much. Our kids are fighting with each other all the time. We realize we haven't had a really relaxed family get together for months. And we wonder how things deteriorated and got to this point when all we can think about from the time we get up in the morning is when can I go to bed, <laughs> right? When can I get away? When can I have a few minutes to myself? It's called life, right? While I agree that New Year's resolutions can sometimes just be futile and a waste of time, I'm also a great believer in envisioning what we want our lives to look like so that we can create a roadmap. It's sort of like a guide for the life that we want to live. And what better way to start that than creating what I call or what many call a family mission statement that defines what your family stands for and it describes your collective intentions for the coming year. So Here's some guidelines for doing that. This is a way to do some course correction that will let you have a better and fresher start in 2023. First, explain to your children that you're gonna come up with a family mission statement that describes your family's values, their priorities, and the ways that you guys wanna address conflict. I suggest having a family meeting, and I love family meetings. I talk about them a lot in my work because they're a formalized way for you to bring your family together, always beginning on a positive note, everyone acknowledging something they appreciate about one another and maybe followed up by, you know, pizza night or game night or movie night. So it's not just, we're gonna meet now, right? So get out the whiteboard or the poster board and record every family's answers to these questions. We are at our best when, Okay, so some examples might be when we're being helpful to one another, um, when we do what we say that we're going to do, when we accept each other as we are, when we listen to each other with respect, when we take care of our house so it's clean and comfortable. So everyone gets to weigh in all the way down to the little ones if they're able. Another prompt for your family in this gathering could be if our walls could talk about our family's life, they would say, so it might be our family loves good food. Um, we like animals. There's a lot of arguing. We're kind of messy. So those are some examples of how some families might finish that prompt. Things about our daily life that we would like to improve. So getting out the door in the morning without shouting, having more family dinners at the table instead of in front of the TV, not having so many fights and arguments about turning off our devices. 
right? So again, everyone is contributing to this. Here's another one. How our family would be different if those areas, those problem areas were addressed, okay? So now you're envisioning and helping your children envision the resolution of those, those issues. This is where the course correction starts to bear fruit. We would start out our mornings feeling happy and stress-free or loved or close. Um, we'd look forward to dinner time. We would spend more time doing fun things together or we would feel more understood or we would feel more relaxed or more safe. Hey there, just a quick interruption. If the ideas that I'm talking about and more importantly, the feeling and sensibility behind them resonate for you, I have a little gift that might be of interest. It's a free tip sheet on building and strengthening and fortifying attachment based on many of the ideas I teach in my work and my books. You can head to susanstiffelman.com slash attachment and it will be yours. Now back to our video. Here's another one, three adjectives, and here you can teach your kids a little grammar, three adjectives that we would like people to use to describe our home environment. So they come in the door, what are three words that people, we would like people to, to use when they're describing what they feel when they come into our home or they've been visiting with us. And it could be, you know, peaceful, safe, comfortable, relaxed, happy, just simple. Uh, here's another one. If we could name one principle or value from which we want our family to operate, what would it be? Now you're teaching values and you're learning and introducing that, those ideas to your children because values are so, so integrated into having a really intentionally positive, loving, connected family. Honesty, acceptance, openness, safety, cooperation, friendliness, fun, integrity. And then you can talk about ideas for handling disagreements and conflict. We agree to take a break when we're getting upset. That's a really good suggestion. Um, we agree that there's no hitting or saying mean things in our family, even if we're really mad. We're gonna write down our agreements about things we usually argue about so that everybody remembers what we agreed to. But once you have your answers that reflect your family's input, then you can begin writing your family's mission statement. Here's an example. The Johnsons are committed to creating a family life that is loving, respectful, and happy. We recognize that each member of our family is unique and we commit to supporting each person manifesting their dreams. We handle disagreements in ways that make sure everybody feels heard, agreements are honored, and no one is hurt. When we're upset, we ask for help with big feelings and we agree to listen to each other respectfully so that everyone knows that their feelings matter. We take responsibility for our actions and we look for solutions that'll help us be the best version of ourselves that we can be. This includes being honest, caring, and friendly toward ourselves and each other. We recognize how much we have to be grateful for and we acknowledge the good things in our life every day. And, and so you can kind of round this out. I don't wanna script it for you. You can talk about family dinners. We have family dinners that help us stay connected. We're glad to be part of this family. You'll have to modify this, but I encourage you to give it a try. I understand, of course, I'm a realist and a pragmatist. So I know that a lot of these things are aspirational. These are behaviors that might seem kind of far-fetched and even impossible to implement in real life, but don't let that limit you. Reach for the stars, even if you stumble on your way there. Just sitting together to work with your family in this way that kind of reflects what you want your family to look like, what you want it to feel like when you're all together, when you're kind of functioning as a unit, it's going to make a positive difference in your life. So run with it, have some fun with it. I, I think just conveying to your children, not through just words and ideas, but through this practical exercise that you and they can create a vision for how we want our lives to look. My gosh, I look at my life and sometimes I go back and I read some of the vision exercises that I did over the years. And I'm amazed at how many things have come to fruition simply because I brought them into some kind of um, 
existence by imagining them and picturing them and imagining the feelings associated with them. So best of luck. Have a wonderful start to your new year. Stay in touch. Please visit susanstiffelman.com and you can sign up for my newsletter. Stay in touch with all the programs. We have over 30 master classes there. We have the Parenting Without Power Struggles membership where I work with parents twice a month personally, addressing their concerns and problems and challenges and breaking old patterns so that we can be more present and engaged as the loving captain of the ship. And then we have a co-parenting with a narcissist membership as well and of course the podcast so and of course the podcast so hope you've enjoyed this and would love for you to share with your friends leave a comment let us know what you'd like me to be addressing or talking about and let's bring a, a lot of love and connection and joy and ease and fewer power struggles into the year ahead thanks everyone